So hi everyone and welcome to this lecture, lecture number 14 of this self-knowledge course. And this conference we are going to be studying today has two objectives. First, it shows the urgency of eliminating these two defects since they make any progress in the inner work impossible. And second, to teach people affected by these two defects to regenerate themselves and eliminate them from their psychology. First, let, let's talk about the alcohol defect. And for this, we need uh, to start by knowing alcohol. Algol is one of the 10 most evil demons on planet Earth. It is represented as the head of Medusa, cut off by Perseus. Um, he manages all the processes of alcoholism and drug addiction within this planet. And it is one of the main demons on the planet that causes the most degeneration in the race. These are his motives. He is the owner of the planet. We see how alcohol is found in all places, areas, social classes, um, and cultures, parties, family gatherings, religious uh, reunions or rituals, everywhere. Even children nowadays have access to alcohol. After being something even illegal a while ago, it has become normal, then mandatory, to the point that a person who does not drink alcohol is considered nowadays as rare. He is a thief uh, of solar atoms. This defect damages our sexual energy and leaves it in an evolutionary state that doesn't allow us to create. He is the father of corruption and misfortune. We can see how many misfortunes happen uh, due to the effects of alcohol, how many lives has been affected due to tragedies or accidents um, caused by people under the effects of alcohol. We see that every day. He is the father of degeneration and vice. How many aberrations and degenerations do we reach because of it? It leads us to do the most perverse things when we are under its um, effects. He is uh, he's the destroyer of homes. We can see how many homes and families destroyed because of this terrible vice. How we make the people around us and our beloved ones suffer because of our vice in all the ways possible, physically, emotionally, how we become even um, negligent with them to the point that we prefer taking our money to, to drink alcohol than to feed our family and so on. He is the cause of misery and ruin. We can see how people lose their properties, their money, their wealth, their friends and family because of this addiction. This demon lubricates the wheel of samsara that is to say that makes the process of returning in the wheel faster cause all the tragedies uh, it causes. And the person ends his cycle of 108 existences in a more accelerated way and goes in a more precipitated way to involution. His kingdom is that of the infernal worlds. His homeland is earth and all humans are his slaves. Alcohol drunkenness is the opposite of a Dionysian drunkenness, something we are going to talk about in a few moments. The demon alcohol takes over the human body cunningly and slowly until finally one day he plunges us into the abyss of drunkenness and madness. We all know about the problems on a physical level that this vice generates. It damages the liver, our brain, our uh, all our system, we could say. But in this conference, we will be breaking down the damage on a spiritual level and how it prevents us from achieving any progress in our inner work. So let's start by saying that this defect ends with the possibilities of self-realization, okay? With each drop of alcohol, the energy or wealth of the microcosm, microcosm uh, man, which is us, disappears. Since it contaminates or pollutes our energy, it also, uh, well, insects 
it leads us to the worst um, baseness, to all kinds of infrastructuralities and fornication. It prevents preaching scientific chastity. It also prevents lighting the sacred fire and raising the Kundalini. It revives dead defects because that contaminated energy in an evolutionary state has the ability to create uh, negatively and it creates more defects in addition to reviving those that we have uh, been eliminated. It increases uh, weakness and lack of will. So we can see that in a drunken state, one, uh, we, we are more influenced by any suggestion to do anything that we wouldn't do in a sober state. It prevents concentration and causes distraction. Uh, it stimulates fantasy. It develops irresponsibility and non-compliance. People with this bias tend to put aside their responsibilities and duties and prefer alcohol consumption to fulfill their responsibilities. It ends with religious, family, and society principles. It weakens the ethical sense. In a drunken state, evil things do not seem so bad to us. We are capable of doing terrible things because it inhabits the personality which is something that contains in many circumstances our defects from acting in a raw way. It ends um, the human part of the individual. That means that it animalizes us. Uh, it influences crime. It poisons the reason to destroy the race. It prostitutes uh, religions. As I said before, we can find it in many religious uh, rituals. So it is very important to know that with alcohol, you have to be radical. Any transaction, diplomacy, or negotiation is doomed to failure. We cannot say that we're going to give it up little by little, or that tomorrow I will start uh, working on it, or that I will only drink um, on a special occasions, or that I will only drink a glass or a drop. If we do this, we will never be able to remove these treacherous defects from our psychology and it will not allow us to advance our inner work. So now let's talk about drugs, okay? And let's start by uh, understanding this. Psychological uh, unfolding of man allows us uh, to demonstrate the crude realism of a higher level in each one of us. When we have been able to verify for ourselves directly the concrete fact of having two men in oneself, the lower one at the common and current normal level and the higher one an octave uh, higher, then everything changes. In this case, we try to act in life according to the fundamental principles that we carry in the depths of our being. So, the psychological unfolding teaches us the reality of the inner man. The outer man has his way of being. He is a thing with multiple attitudes and typical reactions in life. It's, it's a puppet moved by invisible uh, strings. Uh, but the inner man is the authentic being. It is processed in other very different laws. And he could never be he could never be converted into a robot. So no one could reach the second birth, uh, be reborn, as the gospel of the Lord says, as long as he continues to live with the psychology of the ordinary uh, inferior man. When we recognize our own nothingness and inner misery, when we have the courage to review our life we undoubtedly come to know for ourselves that we in no way possess merits of any kind. Blessed are the poor in spirit because they will receive the kingdom of heaven. Poor in spirit or indigent in spirit are really those who recognize their own nothingness, shameless and inner misery. This class of beings uh, unquestionably receive enlightenment. What I mean is that in order to enter the kingdom, the treasure uh, of faith cannot be postponed. As long as psychological unfolding has not occurred in each one of us, faith is something more than impossible. 
Faith is pure knowledge, is direct um, experiential wisdom. Faith is direct experience of the real, the magnificent uh, experience of the inner man. The inner man, knowing through direct mystical experience, has um, his own, excuse me, his own internal worlds, also knows the internal worlds of all the people who populate the faith of the earth. No one could know the inner worlds of the planet Earth, the solar system, and the galaxy in which we live if they don't have uh, or if they have not known their own internal worlds before. This is important to know because many people believe that they can have these types of higher experiences through mystical drugs, for example. The drug addicts extra perceptions have their particular roots in the abominable organ called Kunda buffer or Satan's tail. The consciousness uh, bottled up among the multiple elements that constitute the ego is processed by virtue of its own bottleneck. So we have many mystic defects, religious defects, fanatic fanatics defects, and they tend to manifest, especially when we are in those states under drugs. So, hallucinations of egoic consciousness are the same as hallucinations caused by drugs. Obviously, these two types of hallucinations have their original causes in the Kunda buffer. Are in the effects that alcohol causes us, uh, we will see that drugs also annihilate alpha rays, which is the frequency of brain activity that allows concentration. So there is no connection between the mind and the brain. It also destroys neurons, uh, it deteriorates our internal bodies, it produces sexual impotence too, and so on. The drug addict turns vice into religion and plans to experience reality under the influence of drugs ignoring that the extra perceptions produced by marijuana, LSD, morphine, um, hallucinatory mushrooms, ayahuasca, cocaine, heroin, hashish, ecstasy, uh, tranquilizer pills, amphetamines, um, barbiturates, etc., 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 are mere hallucinations produced by this conda buffer organ. In the 60s, the age of Aquarius began and the Dionysian wave begins to vibrate, uh, vibrate in, um, intensely throughout nature. This wave had the objective of promoting the voluntary transmutation of the sexual uh, levido and reach the mystical transcendental ecstasy. This wave uh, had its negative pole and the earthlings for the most uh, part were not able to polarize themselves uh, positively with such a wave. And there we see all that hippie groups that arose uh, for those times and that promoted the use of uh, any kind of drugs and sexual degeneration. The Dionysian positive pole handles subliminal sexual delight sexual transmutation, the awakening of consciousness, a objective knowledge, superlative intuition, um, the transcendental music of the great cl uh, classical masters, etc. While in the negative Dionysian pole, we find sexual degeneration, infrasexualism of all kinds, homosexuality, lesbianism, demonic uh, pleasures obtained through drugs, mushrooms, alcohol, hellish music like the new age, etc., etc., etc. Dionysian ecstasy, samadhi, are um, evidently essential when it comes to experiencing what is the truth, the real. Such exaltation is 100% possible through the technique of meditation. Through meditation, we can enter the heavens, the higher dimensions, that are the sixth and the seventh uh, dimensions of nature. We don't need drugs for achieving this. And this is not what we achieve when we use any one of these uh, mystical drugs. Psychedelia is a different thing. 
This term translates like this, psyche, which uh, means soul, and dilia, which means drugs. So psychodelia is the antithesis of meditation. Um, hallucinating mushrooms, pills, um, LSD, marijuana, etc., etc., evidently intens intensify the vibratory capacity of subjective powers, but it is obvious that they could um, never cause the awakening of consciousness and can't compare to those we develop when awakening our consciousness. Also, drugs um, fundamentally alter uh, sex genes, and this is already proven uh, scientifically. As a consequence of such negative genetic mutations, we can observe the birth of deformed um, children, for example. So, meditation and psychodelia are incompatible, opposed, antagonistic. They could never ever mix, okay? So now, let's see how should these um, defects be eliminated? How can we work uh, those defects in order to eliminate them from our psychology. If the person is interested in changing and getting out of the situation he's in, he should first apply self-observation. We need to observe um, in us each one of the desires and emotions we have in relation to alcohol or drugs each one of the intellectual uh, justifications for drinking or consuming drugs, each one of the acts of ill will, which are the things th those defects want and lead us to do. For each one of the discoveries that we make through self-observation, we must uh, beg the Divine Mother to eliminate that, that detail from us. By doing this, over time, we will begin to dominate the psychological defect, decreasing its strength and fire until its complete um, elimination. Sometimes, sometimes the defect is very strong because we've uh, fed it a lot. Every time we consume, we feed it. And that makes the defect stronger uh, to dominate us and enslave us. So it will be necessary to impression it. For this, we will use the practice of business with the law that we saw in the previous conference so that they impression it and it doesn't cause us problems in the physical world while we are working on its elimination. In general, the cause of falling into idleness and vices is unemployment. One of the ways to enter the unlimited occupation is the sacrifice for humanity. If the person is regenerating, helping others uh, by giving uh, and helping others by giving them this knowledge, so those people can also eliminate this defect and regenerate. Uh, by the law of correspondence, they will have the right to be helped internally. In people who have uh, fallen very deeply into drugs, it is also recommended to take them out uh, to sublimate in the early morning hours between 4.30 and 6 a.m. to a park, for example, even for half an hour, and breathe fresh air. You have to accompany them because alone they can't. Okay? When the person shows signs of recovery, they need to be taught sexual transmutation, which will allow them to recover and activate new neurons. With the work of birth in suprasex and psychological death, we uh, go on one hand creating the existential bodies and on the other hand eliminating the various details that used to uh, enslave us. It is also recommended when beginning to help the drug addict that he leaves the circle of friends with one he shares these vices and joins um, a new group, for example, that of this knowledge or conference, thus generating strength and receiving support to advance in the elimination of this defect. To speed 
to speed up the process of death of the defect, it is worth reflecting on some aspects that will make us go deeper, see more details, and understand better the, harf, uh, the harmful effect, effects excuse me, of this defect, and therefore generate more strength and wisdom to go against it. We must reflect on um, how far has alcoholism or drugs uh, taken us? What things have we, have we done under the influence of these defects? Uh, the damages that we have done to the physical body. To what, um, to what extent did drugs or alcoholism influence our degeneration? Um, the bad relationships that um, originated with other people, spouse, uh, children, parents, friends, etc., with our work, uh, colleagues, and other beings that surround us. The bad relationships that originated with our being or with oneself, um, the amount of psychological conflicts that attracted uh, to us in this existence. And so on. <laughs> well, um, thank you very much for your presence. Uh, this has been today's conference. Any question can be left uh, in the comments section. And um, I invite you to join us at the to the next conference where we will be learning to differentiate between the actions of the ego, the personality, and the consciousness. So thank you very much, and until next time.